Welcome to In 5 Minutes. The agenda of this clip is to understand the need of dynamic circuits and also very very important how to design a dynamic NAND, NOR and a dynamic inverter. Let's quickly get started. So if you have seen or you would have been following In 5 Minutes, you would have by now studied static circuits and you would have also studied ratioed logic or zero and more circuits as well. For a quick recap, what we studied was in static circuits, we'll need if there is an n input design which we need to make, we need n plus n transistors. We have discussed this in the past videos, and also we discussed that the major drawback with static circuits, if I'm making a static inverter or if I'm making a static NAND, just for that matter. I saw that my PMOS are slower compared to NMOS. In order to make them fast, I need to increase their W by L, which will make my circuit occupy more area. And any which ways, PMOS has its own drawbacks because they are slow. So we tried to eliminate PMOSs in zero NMOS circuits by removing all of them except for one and we'll keep that always on. So this was an N input circuit and we had N plus one transistors needed to design this. For example, if we were doing a CMOS inverter, we saw that this was my circuit. But for example, if we are doing a zero NMOS inverter, then we will have a PMOS which ground input and an NMOS which is a pull down network similar to that we had in a CMOS inverter as well. Static CMOS inverter I mean. So this was my inverter. We also did so one input, one plus one, two transistors needed for an AND. Again the pull down was same. Pull up only had one zero NMOS, which was a PMOS, which is nothing but a PMOS grounded. So this is V out. So for a two input NAND we have total of two plus one three transistors. So it helped us and saving an area in a way. At the same time, it allowed us to reduce our dependencies on PMOS. But then this circuit, zero NMOS circuits, had its own drawback. Let's quickly discuss all the drawbacks of zero NMOS circuits. I'll just keep one diagram here for your reference, and that is of a zero NMOS inverter. And we'll discuss some of the drawbacks of the circuit, which we have already discussed. It's just a recap. So suppose if my input is one, because my PMOS is also grounded, both my PMOS and NMOS transistors are on. So we know that the first thing is when both the transistors are on, there is a direct path between VDD and ground. So there will be some power dissipation. So one is power dissipation and this power dissipation is called nothing but static power dissipation. When there is a direct path between VDD and ground and the current flows from VDD to ground, this is called static power dissipation. So this is present in case of zero NMOS circuits. The second thing which we saw is it cannot produce a perfect zero or I would say that its VOL output low is not equal to zero. Why? Because both of them are on though NMOS is made stronger than PMOS as we discussed in the previous clip in order to ensure that we pull the output at a value which can be interpreted as logic zero, it's still not an exact value zero. So VOL is not equal to zero. Third thing is when both of them are on, they both are trying to pull the output towards their respective selves. This is called output contention. Contention is nothing but when two are trying to access one and both of them are fighting for that. So this creates confusion or contention. We have already studied this in mu p when two registers say register one and register two are trying to access one bus. This is called bus contention problem. Similarly, this is called output contention. So this were some of the drawbacks of ratioed circuits. So we now decided that we need to overcome this drawback and hence we study dynamic circuits. Hope you have enjoyed it. Stay tuned and take care.